An interferometer takes a beam of light, splits it into two beams, then reflect those beams from two separate mirrors back to the beam splitter where they're recombined to form the final beam which is then sent to the detector. The key to the functioning of this device is the distance each beam travels after they're created by the beam splitter. If the difference in distance between the paths at the time of recombination is an integer number of wavelengths, then the beams will recombine in sync or in phase. What we then have is constructive interference. However, if the difference is one half integer of the wavelength, the two beams will be completely out of sync or out of phase when they recombine, causing what we call destructive interference. They cancel each other out. Anything between the two states will have an intensity that's based on how out of phase they are. And this is the amazing part. Because the infrared wavelength we're dealing with is only about 6 to 100 micrometers, we can detect change in distance to the mirror by half that amount. And that's a distance of only 3 micrometers. Now, despite this amazing feature of the spectrometer being extremely useful, it's not the way we're going to detect minerals. But it is an important first and necessary step in that direction. When the difference in distance between the two mirrors is such that it's an integer number of a certain wavelength, then that wavelength will be in sync when both beams are recombined. Constructive interference happens and we end up with a bright spot. If however, we leave everything the same but change the incoming wavelength to something else, the combining wave will not be in sync and they will work against each other causing some level of destructive interference. We end up with a dim spot. We've just turned our distance measuring spectrometer into a frequency filter, and this is the key to detecting the minerals. So what Otis does is it adjusts the difference in distance between its two mirrors to make it an integer wavelength of a certain infrared wavelength we're trying to measure. Interference happens, and the intensity of the center pattern is recorded. Now comes the part that makes the instrument most useful. One of the mirrors is moved ever so slightly, but enough to make the difference in distance match a different wavelength in the infrared spectrum. Interference happens, and intensity of the pattern is once again recorded. Over time, a region of the infrared spectrum is scanned for radiation coming from the planet. For Otis, this infrared band is 5.7 to a little over 100 micrometers. The mirror that moves has to move fast enough to scan the entire infrared band that's mentioned above before the spacecraft moved too far from where the scan started. To accomplish this high-speed movement, the mirror is attached to a voice coil actuator. This is an electric actuator that shares some similarity to the voice coil of a speaker. Applied voltage moves the coil in and out. In a speaker, the coil moves a cone, which then moves air, creating the sound. In Otis, the coil moves a mirror, which effectively changes the wavelength that the spectrometer is tuned to. The voice coil is fed by 2 kHz sine wave voltage, which means that the infrared spectrum is scanned 2,000 times a second. Since the detector measures intensity over mirror distance, this data must be converted to intensity over frequency. So Fourier transform is performed on the input signal before it leaves Otis. After all, this is a Fourier transform spectrometer. <laughs>